Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about peer review and what it means and what it doesn't mean. Um, over the last two years with COVID hysteria, there's been a huge push uh, against free expression, uh, censorship, misinformation, centralized control of the narrative. All of these things are deeply dangerous. One of the things that you'll find is that folks will say, oh, um, they just won't believe anything unless it's been peer reviewed. Um, you could have something right in front of their face, like someone being triple vaccinated and double masked for uh, arbitrarily long periods of time, nevertheless getting infected and uh, to large numbers of their friends, but none of that will mean anything uh, in terms of uh, whether or not the vaccine slows transmission um, because they haven't read it in a peer reviewed um, uh, paper. And now the problem with the notion of, of peer review in this sense is that uh, the real peer review begins uh, once something is already published. Uh, sure, there's often peer review prior to that, but the real reason they have peer review prior to that is gatekeeping. If you're a journal, you're Nature, you're some of these fancy journals, um, you wanna have high impact papers, papers that are truly interesting. And often the best way to gauge whether they're truly interesting and deep and exciting is to have folks say, yeah, this is potentially really exciting. And they also want to make sure that they don't embarrass the journal um, at something that just clearly was a scam or, or, and so forth. Uh, so they want some minimum level um, so that they can have this idea that we've got these really important papers. If, you, if it, There's too many papers out there to read. So if you're going to come to our journal, you can be sure that these are important papers and probably at least on the right track. But peer review is not does not end there and it barely even begins there because in reality most of the time when you get peer review there's two or three uh, uh reviewers um often they can be just folks that they know who you are even if it's anonymous they kind of they guess on the base they can just tell the person that does that kind of work is doug or susie and i like doug or i don't like doug and often this depends entirely on whether they get along or they like them or they feel like they're their opponents and they can be arbitrarily uh uh ornery and just you know, picky uni and, and if they don't like them and just make it practically impossible for the thing to get published, or they can be incredibly easy um, to get through if there's these networks of sort of scratching each other's backs. Ultimately, that's usually what determines whether it gets through that level of peer review. But that's, again, that's more about gatekeeping. That's less about the true substance of science, the true uh, 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 nature of the uh, equilibrium of science is once it's published, and again, most of the papers that are out there in the literature are false. If misinformation was sufficient uh, to get rid of and suspend and censor uh, information, then nearly everything that's published out there in all of those papers uh, would be would be uh, required to be taken down and censored. That's not how you build your way to the truth. You build your way um, by the rungs of the ladder of truth are with the false things that people have said, uh, although they're trying to say the truth. So that's when the real peer review starts. Once it's published, then you have the whole network of folks that then read it and try it on their own, see if it makes sense. And then people write papers arguing against it or people ignore it because they just don't think it's very good. And that's effectively a kind of peer review because no one ever really took it up. It wasn't sufficiently interesting or motivating or leading to anything else. That's where the real peer review happens. The real peer review happens through the network and all of the te teeming numbers of countless numbers of interactions and, and, and complex dynamics of the entire science network. Same thing happens for social media. Same things happens for social networks generally. We move towards the truth by virtue of uh, not someone fact-checking some Twitter saying, okay, what you just said is true or not true by virtue of some undergraduates, you know, working for Twitter. It happens by virtue of the entire network of folks saying does is, is what mark just said you know true or not and if to the extent that more people think it wasn't true or i w wasn't able to back it up or it didn't turn out to pan out to be true the more my reputation falls and otherwise the more my reputation rises these reputation networks when they're functioning normally is exactly how we move towards the truth it's at the network level not by virtue of two or three peer review uh, uh peers uh, doing an actual sort of formal review and not by any kind of fact checking that's how it works. And that was your science moment.